Hi, so a friend of mine recently bought one of these things. This is a lab homogenizer and it spins at something like 13,000 RPM with a homogenization head on it. And Trinity College used one of these to liquid physics for actually high shear uh, exfoliate graphite into graphene using soap. And we have done something similar with soap and with an acetone water mixture using the um, combined solvents to help us exfoliate the graphite. And although it's very interesting, there are several problems associated with it. For instance, you get a soapy mixture of graphite and that can be a bit difficult to separate and purify, or you don't get particularly good exfoliation in there. Um, and so there are other methods available. Of course, like using a whole lot of acetone is obviously not something that a lot of people want to do. Now, this was actually suggested to me by uh, Michael Meadows. In fact, Michael pointed me out uh, a fellow called Goodrich, Edward Goodrich. And Goodrich was working in flocculation of graphite in the uh, turn of the century. And there's a few patents he's got kicking around from 1907 that talk about using tea. And he used tea to help to keep things um, suspended in solution. And it struck me that working on Trinity's idea and working with Goodrich, then you could use high shear exfoliation with tea. So what I did was make a couple of good strong cups of tea, stick some graphite in there, pop it in the homogenizer and whip it around a little bit. And that seemed to work really, really well. Now obviously there's a slight problem with tea in that when you make a cup, you don't really know how much you put in there. So what I did was get some of this stuff, which is galatanic acid. And um, that's because it's from oak gardens. So I get some gallon, uh, some um, acid, and Goodrich uses between two and ten percent. Now I stuck ten percent of um, tannic acid in there, so I put in four grams of um, forty-five micron graphite. And this was supplied to me by Graphaxel. They're a, a UK graphite company, and what they don't know about graphite isn't worth knowing. They know just about everything. And this is a natural flake graphite, and I put four grams of that into a liter of water into the homogenizer with 0.4 grams of my tannic acid and turn it on for half an hour. After half an hour, then you're going to get some exfoliation out of it. Now, as I say, none of these ideas arise in isolation. They're usually a combination of things. It's uh, work that's always been previously done with a little bit of inspiration that makes you think, hey, what about if I did this? And that's really where this idea came from. So, into my litre of water, I add my 4 grams of 45 micron graphite, my 0.4 uh, um, grams of tannic acid, and then just flip it on and turn it up until it's about 12,000 RPM. You can measure the RPM by using an RPM meter. And um, that's what I'm going to do now, and then get back to Here we are half an hour later and I've turned it off. Now, there's obviously quite a lot wrong with that experiment in terms of experimental design. For example, there's no temperature control in there, and you can see it smoking away, and it's actually very hot, because you're imparting an awful lot of energy into there to exfoliate the graphite, and that energy heats up the water. You need to control that if you're going to do something um, experimental with this. Now, you'll see it when you first add the graphite you get silvery clouds moving through it and as you continue the experiment you'll see those silvery clouds change until you get this black liquid with a still a small amount of silver moving around in there. That silver is unexfoliated graphite so it gives you a good idea about whether you've exfoliated it properly, right, properly or not. Now after half an hour I can guarantee you haven't that what will happen is you set this aside for a day or so is most of this will actually just separate out and leave you kind of a blue-grey liquid. That blue-grey liquid is your graphene in solution. So you'd pour that off and centrifuge it to get rid of the um, still large particles, pour that off, and what you will have left then is graphene in solution along with your galatanic acid. And you need to send that off for characterization, so um, electron microscope or Raman, something like that. You then need to repeat that experiment, varying your um, amount of galatanic acid put in there, varying the time that you uh, actually run it for, probably in half hour steps, but certainly in some reasonable step that you would think. Now, when it's settled out, that layer of graphite that's left at the bo bottom there is semi-exfoliated. As Trinity pointed out, if you take that layer and repeat the process with that layer, it will actually exfoliate more easily than the first set of graphite that you put in there. So repeating that a few times will actually give you a very high yield. Trinity report close to 98% apparently. So um, 
those are the kind of things you would need to do, obviously, and that does get very hot. Now, if you notice, the um, homogenizer isn't actually set centrally to the jar, it's set to one side to help it mix. And it's also about 50 centimeters, uh, sorry, 50 millimeters from the bottom to help again that vortex form and help it mix properly. Now, this obviously is the basis for a doctoral research uh, thesis. If you wanted to write one, you could actually do this. Um, and that's probably the way I would proceed with it, really, if I was proceeding with it. Now, I've noticed uh, recently that there's a couple of papers that have come out, uh, clearly and obviously based on the work that I've been doing. And I don't mind that particularly, but there's no credit given. And that's really quite rude, actually. Um, but, you know, these kind of things happen. However, making graphite, um, graphene sorry, from tea is perhaps quite imagination catching and if you do want to do a thesis on this and progress this some more, please feel free, go right ahead, but a little bit of credit would be nice. Um, there's probably a patent or two in there as well, I would have thought, but um, obviously this video will be priority, so it's uh, open source really and, and these kind of things ought to be open source, they're the basic science, they're the sort of stuff that um, really belongs to everybody. The application stuff of it, sure, I think that's fair enough to patent an application, but to patent the basic science I think is uh, rather wrong, and also to, to take work without credit is also rather wrong. I usually give credit where credit's due, and like I say, it was uh, Michael who put me onto this, um, Goodrich fellow, really, and it's um, a kind of combination between Michael's suggestion, Trinity College, uh, their work with high-speed exfoliation, and um, liquid phase exfoliation, of which is a huge list of people that you could mention. Anyway, I hope that was of interest to you, and thank you very much for watching.